<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Magic in the Midwest podcast number seven. Um, I am J.B. Michaels, USA Today bestselling author of many, many books, uh, uh, 12 uh, at the moment, and more to come. Um, and uh, I am also uh, the husband to my more successful wife, Ashley Michaels. Ashley Michaels, and this is the Magic in the Midwest podcast brought to you by Harrison and James Publishing. Um, dot com or just you know check out all of the books uh, that JB aka me has written <laughs> has written on Amazon.com. Ladies and gentlemen, everything from cozy mysteries, uh, middle grade Harry Potter like action adventures, um, and uh, supernatural thrills. Uh, so I got a lot for for everybody. I feel I feel like there's a good range of genres for you to pick from um, in the library of JB. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, last time we talked about um, the table service. I almost said quick service. The table. <laughs> Guys, <laughs> we've been a rough, it's been a rough It's been a morning. rough uh, recording day. Every time we try to go record, there's sounds yeah, happening. Yeah, there's some sort of crazy things happening. Lawns being uh, mowed. Uh, uh, yeah, mowings. For hours. Lots of mowings. Um, yeah, so basically... Uh, we talked about beer, guest, and royal table. That's really all we got to talk about. And then we started talking about yeah, at the we very just, end. We just sort of went on and on. Right. At the end, we well, because we had experiences there. That was good to actually share those, you know. Well, no, I'm just saying it. Way to it's go. Not what we, it's not what we thought was going to happen. <clears throat> um, yes. It was no, organic. It yes. And uh, uh, we're going to continue with uh, table. <clears throat> well, technically, this is not really table service. I mean, it is to a degree. A degree. Uh, but there is uh, one more that we need to talk about. Then we're going to go through the quick service options of the Magic Kingdom. <clears throat> and we left off wanting to talk about Crystal Palace. Yeah. Okay. And if you're not familiar with Crystal Palace, uh, if you are to walk down Main Street from the entrance and you are to um, get to the end of Main Street where Casey Jr.'s is. Yeah. Um, and you... Sorry, <laughs> the bearded dragon is losing her mind. <laughs> Yeah. Trying to get out of the I case. quit. There's that. I mean, she's, all, she's got food. She's literally standing up on two feet, earlier. leaning up against the deals. glass. Like, just cool Look it. At her. Look at her. Her name's Rose. We're actually not even sure it's a girl, yeah. but yeah. We call anyway, her Rose. she's <laughs> she's nuts. <laughs> okay, um, so uh, um, basically, <laughs> if you go past Casey Juniors <laughs> um, and you take a left. Yeah. And you hang towards the front of Casey Jr.'s and you keep going down that path, you'll run into the Crystal Palace, which, of course, is a recreation of the World's Fair in London mm-hmm. and I think, like, 1865 or 1875. One of the World's Fairs that was in London because the big attraction of that World's Fair was the Crystal Palace, which was this all glass, you know, and steel wrought, um, wrought iron uh, building. Um, so that was, you know, then the next one, you know, the Paris World's Fair, the Eiffel Tower, right? Yeah. And the Chicago World's Fair, the big thing was the White City and the Eiffel, uh, the Ferris wheel. So there's all of these big, like, attractions. Well, the Crystal Palace is, a again, a connection to a World's Fair, which seems to be a, like a you know Walt used World's Fair a, World's Fairs a lot in his ideas for the parks. He did. Yeah, um, and obviously participated in some. Uh, all right, so um, Crystal Palace, Ash, tell us about the experience. What is Crystal Palace? Um, so it is a buffet style restaurant. And it's a character dining. So it's actually the characters from Winnie and the Pooh, which I love because when I was younger, I grew up watching Winnie and the Pooh. Um, And I think it's the only place in all the parks where you can see those characters. Is that correct? Um, It's the only place where they, yeah, they come out consistently, all of them. All of them. Right? At the same. Um, So we, I've, I've been there one time. I don't know if JB's been there more than once or not, but we took Harrison when on our trip when Harrison was five months old 
and it was one of the best experiences we've had with character dining. Um, right. He wasn't really afraid of the characters yet, but uh, they all took a long time, especially Piglet took a long time um, in front of Harrison and kind of like cuddling with him almost. And to be honest, I don't really remember the food specifically like i don't remember it being bad i don't remember it being fantastic i, I actually I remember thought it being like good the food was really good oh, I, I would give see, it a really good rating i just don't I think really it, remember i think the food at at crystal palace was better than royal table oh, okay. okay yeah no i yes no i think crystal palace's buffet is excellent if you if you for a buffet it's really good okay i would i, I would I, yeah. I, I believe you i think sometimes when i'm have you been there before that? No. Okay. I think I was just focused on, you know, we had a baby and the bottles and all the different stuff and the characters coming around. I, yeah, I don't remember it being bad, but if JB says it was good, then I'm sure it, it, I agree. Um, but... Uh, yeah, it, it's, you know, it, it's... Um, the, here's the thing about the Crystal Palace. Like, you could probably get in there. Yet, yeah, it, it is character dining, so it's mm-hmm. going to be expensive. Yeah. Um, now, however, the characters in the Crystal Palace are really, really good. They like, are. Was... The Pooh characters, all of them, Rabbit, Piglet, Tigger. Pooh, Tigger, all of them are really great, and they spend a decent amount of time. Eeyore. Eeyore, yeah. yes. They spend a decent amount of time hanging out with you. Um, and like, yeah, when our son was little, you know, he was, you know, he still is obviously, you know, adorable, um, looks like Ash, <laughs> um, uh, aka you're adorable. Thank um, you. no problem. Correct. No problem. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So they spent a lot of time, but I mean, you are getting a really fantastic, um, you know, dining character, dining experience there. And What's also neat, we had a great spot. We they did. actually put us with a view of the castle, which isn't always the case. Like we were against like those big pane. Right. Like, we windows. were right by the next to the porch. Yeah. Um, and we could look out and see um, Magic, you know, the, the Cinderella castle and everything. So that was cool. And it's a nice like atmosphere inside. It's it's a lot of light, natural light. Um, and it's you know it's a it's a cool place. It's a nice place to eat, um, you know. So and again, like like Ash said, um, Piglet was the one that stayed. I swear, Piglet was by our table for like ten minutes. Right, right. And I yeah, Piglet did not want to leave. We have a picture of Piglet's like head up against like Harrison's forehead, like he was just like cuddling with his head. It was right. just really cute. Right, and, right. Um, to date, it's my favorite character dining experience. Yes, yes. Um, yeah, so that one is highly recommended uh, for character dining in the uh, Magic Kingdom. And I'm pretty sure you can, like I said before, you could get reservations there pretty... It's not necessarily like it, sixty yeah, it's, days it's out not, or it's whatever not it is. It's not six months. Six months. Sorry. Whoa. 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 Get your facts. You right. guys, I wish I could have Get recorded that. Your facts. Look, right. I got. You should have. Man. Oh, appalling. I don't like you. Um. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so. <laughs> I don't like you either. Oh my. Um. I was gonna say something else. I. I. I feel like probably a lot of people that listen to this podcast do know about the Crystal Palace, but. Sometimes I feel like it's like this hidden gem that people don't know about. You know, it's funny. I think it's because, yes, it's a character dining experience. And it's the Pooh characters. Like, unless your kids are smaller, you know what I mean? I feel like it's a yeah. smaller kid experience. If your kids are older, you know, Pooh, Pooh characters maybe aren't as appealing. I don't know. We'd have to yeah. ask people what they think. But, yeah, you know, I you know it's funny. Because it's you not just, like Mickey and... Right. Yeah, yeah you yeah. don't think of the Crystal Palace that much. But you could call like a month ahead of time or even maybe a couple weeks ahead of time because that's what I did. Yeah. I got us reservations like a couple weeks before we left. And I was like, because again, I always add well, stuff. Well, always again, adding. I'm always adding <laughs> fun stuff. Expensive things. To fun do. stuff to do. JB says fun. I say expensive. Right, right. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, I, you know, th- that one is recommend, highly recommended. Um, and even if you aren't, you don't have little kids. It's a, it's good food. The food is actually really good. Yeah. And 
you know. Are they open for lunch and dinner, or they do? Breakfast I think it's. Too? I I think they might do. Yeah, they might do everything. They might do everything. Okay. Yeah, I I think they probably do everything. Um, but yeah, I mean, I would say it's recommended. It's a cool location. You know, right on Main Street, like right off Main Street, technically. It's technically off Main Street. Um, it's pretty in there. You get you can get a view of the castle. It's a it's a it's a good time. I would definitely I recommend it. Recommend the Crystal Palace character dining experience with the uh poo characters. Um, okay, so the rest of today we are gonna talk about our favorite quick service restaurants. Yep. Okay, Ash. And in the Magic Kingdom. In the Magic Kingdom only. Yes, in the Magic Kingdom only. Um, all right, Ash. What would you like to talk about? Which one do you want to talk about first? Which, well, first off, what's your favorite? Uh, Pecos Bills right. is my favorite out of the ones we've eaten at. Cool. Okay, um, Pecos Bills. Yeah, I, I, you know, it's in Frontierland. Right? Yeah, Frontierland. Um, double checking. Um, and I just like it because they have that, like, taco bar or nacho bar. It's, you know, pretty right. likable food for most people, and you can kind of control what you're putting on there. But I just, you know, I don't know, it's good. It just yeah. hits the spot. Yeah. So so Pico's Bill's Tall Tale and Cafe, for years and years and years, was just a place in Frontierland to get burgers and like a chicken sandwich and that was it. Like Oh. Yeah. It was not it was not Tex Mex. Can you still get that there? Chicken sandwich? And... No. Um probably not. I'm looking at it right now. I'm looking at the I'm looking at the menu right now. So um you know the Pico's Bills Tall Tale and Cafe is really it's big. Um it's along the stretch of Frontierland, which is right across from, you know, the rivers of America you know, and Tom Sawyer Island. And it is just for some reason, it's the place we like to go the most. Yeah. Like we just, like when we talk about it, like we'll, a- we'll ask each other randomly, like on a walk, we'll be like, all right, quick service place. You want to go right now. And you, you usually Pecos, we both say Pecos, Pecos, Pecos bills. bills. Yeah. I like it because I mean, it's huge. There's so much seating. Um, and there's, I mean, like, the seating just goes on and on and on. And there's uh, places where you can sit with a lot of people. You know, like, we had, like, six people or however many that could sit together. And, um, yeah, I, mean, I just like the taco Yeah, bar. there's a I lot like the of seating. Bar. There's a lot of seating. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and there's some, there's some outside seating as well. Mm-hmm. I mean, not that you want to. You want to really stay inside and get the AC on you. But if you're there's nothing else, you could go outside. There's, there's like, a – it's a closed-in porch outside there, dining area. Um, so it's not like you're right out on to the Frontierland Street. Um, yeah, it, for some reason, Pecos Bill's Tall Tale Inn Cafe is the whole name of the uh, place. But it is yummy, um, and it's a good place to get. And here's the – just to give you an idea, here's some of the stuff on the menu. It's a, you get, Obviously, you get cheeseburgers. You get beef nachos. You get a beef rice bowl, chicken nachos, chicken rice bowl, a fajita platter. Um you know, plant-based Southwest cheeseburger. Um, like I said, they Disney does try and accommodate everybody um, and their, you know, their dietary options. They really do. Southwest salad, pork carnitas nachos, pork carnitas rice bowl, uh, veggie nachos, taco trio. So, yeah, it's Tex-Mex. It's really good. Um, and I think we did go there... Um, I think we did go. Did we go the last time? I don't know if we did. I don't no, think we, we did. did. We were in there with mom and dad. Okay. Um, yeah. So we did like you know go in there and grab some um, some beef. I think we just got beef nachos actually. But you can order like a bunch of stuff. It's one of those places where you can feel like you can order a lot of different things. Um, so that was it's and it's and it's yummy. It's it's something different than just you know, getting a cheeseburger or a chicken sandwich or, you know, a fish sandwich in the park. Um, and it's decent and it's a cool spot, good location. You know, get your fast pass for Splash Mountain or Big Thunder, you know, eat in Pecos Bills and head over there, you know. Yeah, I like that you can control the toppings and all that, you know. Right, just, right. Yeah, make and, it more of a salad or, you know, whatever. I just, I like the flexibility 
of the Tex-Mex. Now, I have a question for you. What yeah. do you prefer? Do you prefer to get lunch before you leave for the afternoon break? Because that's what we do, guys. Um, we we go into the parks very early, mm-hmm. um, but we don't go in early during extra magic hours anymore. Yeah, don't do that. That's not a good thing. We talked about that in the past. Um, don't do it. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but we go in early, get a bunch of stuff done, and then we leave. You know what? What would you prefer, Ash, to go to go in early and then get lunch at Pico's Bills and then leave for the for the afternoon break and then come back later, or do you like to leave, eat lunch back at the resort, and then come back and eat dinner at Pico's Bills? Like, what is your ideal? To me, um, honestly, if I had to pick out of those two, I would say leave, eat lunch at back at the resort, and then come back and eat uh, Picos Bills for dinner. And here's why: okay, because I feel like when you come back, because we always we always take a break in the middle of the day. <laughs> Sorry. There's, oh my gosh! There's a lot happening. A lot here. of noise. Go ahead. Um, yes, come here. What? Hold on, just, just okay. Our all son right. is upstairs. So, hold on. All right, I'm so gonna, hold that thought. You go up there, and I will. Uh, yeah, you why. continue. Yeah, yeah. Of okay. Um, so here's why, guys. The reason is, so we take a break in the middle of the day. Like JB said, we usually go into the park pretty early, and then a lot of times for the first few hours, we will get on like eight different rides, um, and then around lunchtime, we will. Uh, head back to the resort and take a nap, go swimming, eat lunch. And then around four, we, around four-ish, usually we head back into the park. So I like to grab something to eat when we come back. And it's because at that time, like four o'clock now, we usually go in the summer months. So it's pretty hot. I feel like that's one of the hottest parts of the day. The sun's been beating down on the ground for a long time. And, um, I like to grab something to eat then because we're sort of, even though it's hot, you come back to the park and you are sitting in the air conditioning and you're sort of riding out that last part of the hot day in the air conditioning before the sun starts to go down. True. So that's my reasoning for that. I'd rather, you know, because I was just saying, JB just came back from downstairs. So, you know, when you go back into the park at four, it's still really hot. So I think it's if nice to go. go. Yeah. Well, yeah. but I mean, I was saying that's what we do. So I would prefer to grab dinner when we come back because then you're kind of sitting in the air conditioning for that really hot. Part, yes. Yes. You know, rather than waiting in a line or something like that. So yeah. it's just me. You know, it, it also depends on like, also like when you go back into the park, depends on, you know, uh, how late the park's open that night. You know what I mean? How big of a break do you want to take? You know what I mean? Um, yeah. Well, as I said, it, it's flexible. And like I said, we go in the summer, so it's hot. But yeah, sometimes we head back into the park later. Sometimes it's earlier. Right. It just depends on what our fast passes are. And but that's a good point. Like, you want to get out of that peak heat. Because that's like the sun's yeah. been beating down. It's it's really hot at like 4 or 5 o'clock, actually. Right. So, all right, excellent. Okay, so let's go to another uh, quick service uh, that we like, and that is. Um, it's okay. Pinocchio's. <laughs> Sorry, uh, guys. <laughs> Our son is down here. Harrison, Harrison, we're, we're recording right now, so you gotta. We can't come help you. You, gotta, you can sit with us. All right, p- talk about Pinocchio's Village. No, no, uh, you talk about it because I no, don't really I know have... what to say. Pinocchio's yeah. Village House. <laughs> we're, we're whisking him away. Okay. Um, so basically another fun uh, quick service dining restaurant that we like to go to is Pinocchio's Village House. And um, it is like kind of like, you know, just Italian, um, Italian, like, food you know and i mean it's kind of you know i mean whatever that means not necessarily um you know a full-on restaurant okay um but it is really good and the cool thing about pinocchio's village house which we talked about in the past is that pinocchio's village house is inside the same building as it's a small world so you can like sit 
in Village House and look at uh, the people and the decorations of It's a Small World, like the the boat entry, the loading dock, basically. Um, and you could sit there if you're you know if you're one of those people that hates It's a Small World because the song annoys you to no end. You could go in there, have a coke, have a drink, get a snack, and watch your family go on the go on the boat and wave, you know, from from uh, Pinocchio's Village House. So that is uh, a pretty awesome thing to do. So, um, yeah, and basically we went there. I think the last time I went, I got a, like, macaroni and cheese flatbread. It was really good. <laughs> oh, was it? <laughs> yes. I actually don't even know what I normally get there. Probably, like, a chicken sandwich or something, like chicken. Like mango. a Parmesan. Actually, the chicken Parmesan sandwich is good, too. I think I've gotten that last time. I think Maybe. you got that, too. Sounds heavy for me, but maybe. Sounds heavy. Well, yeah, it is. It's, it's Like I said, it is Italian. Um, this is, again, obviously a fantasy land. This one, you could get nuggets, obviously. You get antipasto salad. You get chicken parmesan pasta, the chicken parm sandwich, and then you get those flatbreads, which are neat. So instead of getting like a full-on pizza, you could just get flatbreads. So there's gourmet cheese flatbread, a margarita uh Flatbread um, with shredded mozzarella, fresh tomatoes, mozzarella, pearls, and basil. Meat lovers, um, penne pasta with mar- marinara and pepperoni flatbread. So it's basically kind of a, you know, Italian-American, you know, kind of mix. I mean, we've got in there um, to eat, you know, a few times, which yeah, was Yeah, I would good. say after Pico Spills is my next, next go-to. Yeah. It sort I mean, of depends on what I'm in the mood for, but those two are definitely the top. Right. And I, I just, I don't know, for some reason I like it in there. And here's the thing about quick service. Here's the thing about quick service dining options. Okay. Um, you have to, you have to like, there's, there's spots in those restaurants. Okay. That are like neat. Like there's upstairs little nooks. Yeah, we didn't know there was an upstairs yeah. until recently. Right. So if you if you go to the quick service, uh, I know there's upstairs in Columbia Harbor House. Um, there's upstairs in um, Pinocchio's Village House. Okay, and there's upstairs. Uh, I can't remember where's. There's not an upstairs in Pico's Bills, um, but yeah, there's a couple places where you can like find places that people never go. When yeah. they get their food, they don't. Everybody like thinks that they only could stay on that first floor and that's it. But there's a lot of other places you can find in, uh, inside those quick service dining rooms. So make sure you look. You know, actually, there might be an upstairs. I was going to say bills. there might be one. We just don't know about it. Right. Well, that's a, that's interesting. If you know that there is, let us know. Uh, Magic in the Midwest podcast at gmail.com. <laughs> um, yeah, so if you want something, you know, Italian, that, you know, and, and it's decent and it's just, you know, a good place to get, um, uh, you know, get some get some good food. Okay, that's the Pinocchio Village House. Uh, and cool side dish is breadsticks. So you can just get breadsticks. Yeah. And tomato basil soup. Sounds so, good. Yeah, yeah. You Next know, time. yummy. I always make bad decisions when we're in the parks, though. Like, I just want the most fattening, you know, thing. Well, you know, it's weird. It's like you're walking you so are. Much. You walk it off. You sweat it off. Oh, definitely sweat it off. Yeah. When we're there, definitely. I mean, yeah. you really do, you know, like, you know, Disney is a workout. Like, you're... I love Pico's Bills, like, the just nachos. Let's just get nachos. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah we love doing that. <laughs> um Okay, so then some other uh, places that we like in quick service places that we like. Another one we love is Gaston's Tavern. And it's not it's not like a full, it doesn't have like no, a real full menu. Um, and it's very limited seating, like very. Isn't there like six spots to sit inside? Six tables? Yeah, it's, it's pretty small, yeah. which, I, which I think is, well, there's two, a little bit more because there's two sides. There's oh, the, okay. you, you order in the middle, and there's a room on the left and a room on the right. Okay. The room on the right has, like, the fireplace and, like, a, you know, we never go to the right. We always sit on the left side of the I room. didn't know that there was seating on the right. I thought it was something no, else. No, no. There's a, there's a big fireplace and, and more seats. there's seating outside, right? A, l- a little bit? Are yeah, there's, there's a couple of tables outside. Yeah, not, not now, this is a new Fantasyland, so it's not 
near Village House, you'd have to kind of like walk a little bit further behind Seven Dwarfs Mine Train, um, and you will find Gaston's Tavern. And it to me, it's obviously it's newer, but if you remember the movie, it looks exactly like it. You know, it does. Oh, yeah. it, does it does look exactly like the. Um, you know, but really, it's not like a. You know, it's it's not a. It's more of a snack place. You know. Oh yeah, you I think they have like a pretzel <clears throat> or. Yes, they got s- like some sort of cinnamon bun or something like that. Yeah, right? in the morning they have a warm cinnamon roll. Yeah, and they they have fruit and cheese picnic platter, a ham and Swiss sandwich, servo chips, and smoked turkey. Tur turkey. Turkey. <laughs> That does not sound good. A smoked turdy sandwich. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> Why is this dirty in here? Um, okay. Yeah, smoked turkey and gouda? Gouda? How do you say it? I think it? it's gouda. 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 Cheek. How do I no, not No, it's know? not gouda. It's gouda. It's not. Gouda <laughs> cheeks. Get your gouda. I want to say something about this. So will you wrap up your menu reading? Okay, sorry. Um, and that's all the entree is. But the no, big... No, I want to talk about it. The Don't big snack steal. attack. Here. Okay, go ahead. What's the big... The big draw the of guests on Stavros. Yeah, LeFou's Okay, brew. now everyone gasp. Because I like LeFou's brew better than a butterbeer at... Um, why can I not think of the... <laughs> Fill it in. Do I have to help you? Yes, help. I like this. I like that you're doing <laughs> Hogwarts. Hogwarts, yes. Or um, technically Hogsmeade. Yeah, Hogsmeade. Hogsmeade, yes. Um, you know, the butter beer is great, but it's re- like really, really sweet. I really like the LeFou's brew because it's just not as sweet and... I mean, it's not butterscotchy as much. It's kind of... No. Whatever. But for me, it's just a preference. I'm not saying it's better. I like it better. Um, but... If you're someone that does not have to stand in front of the castle to watch all of the projections, yes, grabbing a LeFou's brew and a snack and watching the fireworks from um, the back, the back, yeah, that's a great place. It's kind of neat. To it watch is neat. It. Yeah, you know, there's not a lot of people back there. At least the last time we were there, there were it was not crowded back there, and it's kind of just like a relaxing, okay, casual. <clears throat> so I've got a cool story about. Was I done? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were. I am now. (laughs) (laughs) My gosh. Today is not going well. I think our son's upstairs crying because I told him to be quiet. (laughs) Guys, though, to be fair, he was really good for like an hour and a half when we were going to be recording. But then this lawnmower thing started. Yeah, lawnmowers everywhere. as soon as that happened, now, you know, he wants to. He'll be okay. He's fine. He's fine, guys. He's living his best life, playing We're games, really having fun. Good parents. Call DCFS. No, I'm kidding. Um, uh, Why would you say that? <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Oh, my gosh. Okay, go on. No, he's good. All right, so um, can I talk about LeFou's Brew? No, you can. Okay. Um, I'll Ash is referring to LeFou's Brew, which is what do you frozen. Mean? I said what I was referring to. No, you didn't tell everybody what it was. Yeah, though. I said a LeFou's Brew. You didn't tell what an actual LeFou's brew is. Oh my is. gosh, you guys, do you see it? You idiot. Okay, it says frozen apple and juice. And around Mother's Day, guys, take note. Frozen apple juice. Take <laughs> serious note. Frozen, <laughs> frozen apple juice with a hint of toasted marshmallow and topped with all-natural passion fruit mango foam. Ladies and gentlemen, I love it's really good. LeFou's brew. It is very refreshing. Um, I've now come to the conclusion that to beat the heat, you really need a frozen oh, yeah. type drink. You really do. That really helps you a lot. That was like a slushy. Mom or... started that. She did. Yeah. She did. So I mean, you need to stay hydrated. Water is important. But more than an ice cold water, a, a frozen drink will get you there. Yes. Cool you quickly. Off. Yeah. Yeah. And I love it. I actually have a LeFou's Brew souvenir stein. In the cabinet right now. Yes. I love it. I love it. It's taking up a lot of space. I, But I don't care because it's LeFou's brew. And if it was gone, JB would never notice. No, I would. he doesn't use it. I use it all the time. No, you don't. I'm good enough. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Um, Also, um, you know, if you ever are around Gaston's Tavern, Gaston is often outside there. Oh, my gosh. Guys, he is. he is quite possibly one of the best characters to interact with yep he's ridiculous i think what are you supposed to say to him that he'll do something 
Like your your certain things yeah, you say, oh that's Woody. I know what you're talking about. Maybe that's Woody. No, but, but there's I other think there's something Gaston with Gaston says. too, and I don't remember what it is. But anyway, I'm sure there you can are Google it. yeah, there are things you could say to Disney characters that they will do like a something. Oh, to Woody, it's like Andy's coming. Yeah, and, and he like him. drops down on the floor or something. Yeah, like he that. drops down on the ground and like pretends that he's limp. Right. Um, I would imagine you could only do that so many times. Gaston though. makes you do like makes. Guys do push-ups and stuff. Yeah, uh, I'd yeah. Like to send you over really, there. Oh, oh, I would do it. I'm really. Oh, you guys I'm see? Real strong. Oh, my I'm God. really strong. It's fantastic. The amount of muscle mass that they've got in my body. I think you're more just unbelievable. Relatable to like Lafu. Le, I am not more relatable <laughs> to Lafu. That is ridiculous. Why are you doing that voice? Because I love the Arnold Schwarzenegger. Just... Get to the chopper. Go. Okay. Anyway, <sighs> um, so. Uh, LeFou's Brew is fantastic, and um, I would definitely recommend it. Now, here's a cool thing about Ashley talking about the fireworks It's a cool back thing there. about me. No, nothing cool about you, Ashley. <laughs> um, all right, so we went there, uh, went to Disney right after uh, my mom passed away because she had like basically planned the trip, and we all went. And we it was mm-hmm. about time for Happily Ever After, the big night show my mom loved. The castle fireworks. She, she did like Happily Ever After. I think she was more partial to wishes. But anyway, so we all, you could tell we were all sort of like avoiding. Subconsciously. Subconsciously avoiding, avoiding getting a spot in front of the castle. Like we not, no one talked about it. Right. We just didn't do it. We just it. didn't do it. Yeah. Yeah. And it started raining and too. And JB's family, they're, they're planners. So like it just did not come up. Right. So and we just yeah. couldn't like... Get ourselves to, to do go it, over there. right? Yeah, so yeah. we just all of us were sort of like not having it. It, it was also it, our first night there, right? And it had started raining. Yep. And, and we were over in that corner of New Fantasyland, which is you know the um, by Gaston's, and you know we went in there, got a snack, and got some Lafou's brew and chilled. I came back outside. It was raining. It was like, oh, it's you know it's fireworks time. And like I think we may have mentioned it once or twice, but nobody made any action yeah yeah. right but one of the coolest things ever we decided we wanted to go over to big thunder all of us Mm -hmm. so we did but one of the coolest moments and memories that i have of magic kingdom and just something that was magical about it was you know the rain had stopped at that point but the fireworks were still going on and i had harrison on my shoulders and um, we decided that we were going to go run over to Big Thunder. And the fireworks and the music, everything was happening all at the same time. Yeah. And I had him on my shoulders, and we were like kind of all kind of going fast. Like, I remember all of us kind of going a little well, fast. I think we wanted to get over there and try and get in line because we thought it might be shorter because the fireworks right. were going on. Like, let's get over there. Right. And yeah. Harrison loved that I was like going fast. And of course, I was being like ridiculous about it. So I was like bobbing and, you know, <laughs> doing all sorts of crazy things typical stuff and laughing and kind of tickling him and Mm -hmm. stuff like that and the fireworks were going off and the music was loud and it was just it was what could have been a very rough sad experience right which i you know not saying it wouldn't be it wouldn't have been cathartic but still turned into sort of like a magical moment Mm -hmm. like it really was great to have him on my shoulders and running through New Fantasyland, and then Fantasyland, and then in through Frontierland, where it's all pretty there next to the river, and then heading right into Big Thunder and having a great time at Big Thunder. Yeah. It was just a really something I will always remember mm-hmm. when my son was a he, he was, was very little. He, he was, was three. three, and you know what? Harrison's cousins on that side are all a little bit older. older. I think at the time yeah. they were like 10, 11, 12, or 9, 10, 11, something yeah. like that, yeah. and they all kind of, you know take him in and consider him like a like a little brother yeah and you yeah. know they harrison was right at that age where he was like sort of considering being afraid of fireworks but wasn't sure yeah and they were all you know so harrison was on your shoulder sort of looking back at them yeah and they yeah. were like doing funny faces at him and you were tickling him and he i don't know yeah. if that made fireworks a positive experience for right because then he was never really afraid after that but right he was giggling. The kids were having a great time and were running across the park like crazy right. people. And what's cool is that we were able to basically go that fast because it was pretty sparse 
in other parts of the park because everybody right. was watching the fireworks. I mean, it's a good time to watch. It is, and I think done. more even when when Wishes was the show because people kind of did spread out more, but now because of the projections, really. So many people are in front of the castle. Like yes. All the way down Main Street, people really more than ever want to be able to see the front of the castle. Yes. So there, it was, yeah, pretty open spaces as we ran across the park. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. So pretty neat. Um, it was it was neat. Um, yeah, it's just a, a magical moment with the, you know, the music, the fireworks, the kid, the And laughter. you know what, for me yeah. too, and I know everyone's different, there is something to be said for watching the fireworks show and it is really great. But for me, it is also freeing to not get a spot an hour and a half ahead of time and stand there and have someone inevitably block your view at the last second and just sort of embrace the open park. Right. You can do that. I mean, know, I, I mean, I think... I think, you know, we always want to see the show, You have too, to. You've got to make it to the show, too, at some point. Um, but, but yeah. if you're in Magic Kingdom more than once... Uh, yeah. And, and, you know, if you're someone who likes to watch the fireworks show more than once, that's totally cool. But it, it is kind of neat to take advantage of the park during that time. It is. It is. Um, okay, so next thing, um, another uh, cool uh, place thing that we like to do, like like a, uh, either before we leave as a snack, not a full lunch. There's the um, uh, the Golden Oak Outpost, um, and then there's also just a smaller kiosk in Frontierland that has pretzels, and we just like to get pretzel and cheese and get like a, a you know a, a slushy you yeah. know or a, um, you know, Slurpee, whatever you want to call it, and uh, just chill and get those. And then another good quick service that I like is Columbia Harbor House, which is in Liberty Square. Um, and it is, again, like I said, a place where you could find like some cool little nooks and crannies to, to sit in. And Columbia Harbor House is, um, you know, right by the Hall of Presidents across from um, Memento Mori, which is the mm-hmm. Haunted Mansion, um, the Haunted Mansion store. souvenir shop, yeah. right? This the store, which is relatively new, actually newish. Um, and is it newish? I mean, it's not. It's it's Memento Mori is not an like an old shop. It's yeah, relatively new within okay. the past few years. Past yeah. Few years. Oh, okay. Um, so here's some of the things you can get at Columbia Harbor House, which is uh, chicken breast nuggets and fish. Uh, because it's like New England, there's some fish options, right? Okay. Um, and shrimp and salmon and chicken pot pie and harbor salad with chicken, harbor salad with shrimp, which basically is just, you know, um, you know, different, just different types of things. Lobster roll, shrimp and chicken breast nuggets, shrimp and fish, um, battered fish. I mean, it's kind of, I mean, if you if you're a person that likes fish. You know, this is a good place to go or seafood. Yeah. But also it just has chicken too. So if you just want to do that as well. Um, that one I really also enjoy. I think it's one that doesn't really, you know, um, I feel like, you know, I don't know. I feel like we don't, we haven't been there that often. No. Right. Um, but it's still good. I would definitely recommend that one as well. And there's an upstairs too. Um, all right. So... Anything else you want to talk about snack? Oh, yeah. Okay, so the last thing we like to do for a quick service option, a snack option, um, is upon our exit Mm -hmm. on our first night, usually, at the Magic Kingdom, Mm -hmm. um, we like to head over into the confectionery, which is uh, on Main Street, right at the, like, near the entrance or the exit, right? Both the same. Um... And it's a place where you get all sorts of delicious. Wait, I don't think we talked about sugary treats. Places in Tomorrowland. Well, do we? Do, do we have to? Do you want to? No, no, I, just, I didn't. We already, we talked about cosmic rays a lot. I think yeah, on the podcast. Really. Maybe it's just yeah. burgers and stuff. You can tell how we feel. About we it. we. I mean, I don't know. I mean. <laughs> yeah, no, you're fine. I just wanted to make sure we. That's fine. Um, yeah. So what we like to do is go to the confectionery. Everybody has like their favorite you know, snack to get. Um, oh, we can also talk about other Main Street quick service, which is Starbucks in the morning. You know, sometimes we've, we've we will, gone there. Sometimes we will grab, grab Starbucks like in the a morning, breakfast sandwich. Coffee, breakfast sandwich. Right. Not always, but sometimes. Um, there, yeah, it's a Starbucks, but it's not like it doesn't say, like, it's not plastered all over. 
that Starbucks. No, it but says, I mean, a lot of people like the different Starbucks coffees and stuff. Right, but I mean, all right. that is an option. And the lines do move relatively I don't quickly. think I've ever eaten at Casey's. Casey Jr.'s. No, we talk about it a lot. Yeah, we, we walk in it do because it. it's connected to the Emporium Yeah. at the end of the... But we never, like, go in there and get a hot dog or anything. Like, it just... We never do that. Because I'm not really into hot dogs really that much. Yeah. Um... Um, all right, so the confectionery. Yeah, the confectionery, which is really neat because it actually has connections to here. Um, the confectionery is based off the White City. Oh. Inside it, it's the 1893 Chicago World's Fair inside of it. Cool. Because Walt Disney's father helped build it. Isn't that cool? El- Elias Disney helped build the Columbian Exposition. In Chicago in 1893, and then there is a homage to it in the confectionery. And what's our favorite? My grandmother's favorite snack was fudge. And mm-hmm. She would get that down the street on Main Street. She would get fudge and bring it back to the resort, and mm-hmm. we would eat fudge for the rest of the, the time. And it was so good. Um, but what do we like to get, Ash? We get the Mickey-shaped Rice Krispie treat, like the big one. <laughs> yeah, okay. So there, okay, there is... A distinction that we have to... There's the smaller ones you could get. And some of them are dipped in chocolate. And they're dipped in chocolate. Yeah, you, know, you could get the big one dipped in chocolate, too. Yeah. But there's ones that are massive, like the size of my head, basically. It's like or big. Or bigger, right. even. <laughs> it's big. No, it is. It is yeah. big, yeah. It's a big Rice Krispie treat. And we love to get a couple of those, maybe one of those... Um, sometimes we get sometimes two. Sometimes we do two. Yeah. Yeah, we, we start there eating a long it time. on the way out. Yeah, we start eating on the way out on the monorail or um, wherever. You know, we just we And then just we get a little it. competitive sometimes because I feel like JB's eating more of it. Then right. Then I'll go eat more of it. Right. Even if I'm not hungry. I don't really get competitive. <laughs> I didn't know that you got competitive. No. Um, well, it's because you're always the one eating more. <laughs> <laughs> so we love... We love... The Rice Krispie Treat, uh, the big giant Rice Krispie Treat. So good. It is fantastic. So uh, that's our favorite. Tell us what your favorite is, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, we want to know. Email us, message us on Facebook, uh, Magic in the Midwest uh, podcast at gmail.com, Magic in the Midwest podcast uh, dot Facebook dot com, right? Or Facebook dot com slash Magic in the Midwest podcast. (laughs) Um, again, thank you <laughs> so Facebook. much to our subscribers. Did we thank our subscriber this time? Do we get any new subscribers? No, I don't think we got one. any new ones okay. this time. Uh, that's okay. Uh, but thank you guys so much for subscribing. I don't know, though. I'm not sure. I'll double check. Yeah, we'll double check. Thank you so much uh, for subscribing. Uh, thank you so much for listening. Um, if you're not a subscriber, you, you know, if you would like to hear more from us, we do uh, attraction. Well, Smackdown. Well, Smackdown. On bandcamp.com. We have exclusive episodes and uh, a way for you to support the podcast um, on magic of the Midwest podcast.bandcamp.com. Yeah, so So check it out. Check that out as well. Three bucks a month. Um, As JB says, you won't even know it's gone. You won't even know it's like, yeah, I mean, three bucks? I mean, that's. Stop. That's nothing. Okay. You make it um, sound like people have to do it. No, they don't. No, thank you so much to those who do. Yeah. Um, but because it, it really does help. Because, you know, we try and create a, a quality sounding quality podcast. And that, that does cost some, some cash. Yes. And we have fun recording those Smackdowns. We're actually doing something a little different this time. It won't just be an attraction. Right. Smackdown, it's going to so. be um, lands. So, all yeah. right. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Midwest. See you later. <laughs>